Welcome to the latest Saturday show here on KFAR. They call this Patriot's Lament. I'm Steve Floyd, the monkey behind the machine here. On the other side of the council, in front of the microphones, we've got Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises and Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. They are the uh, the two spearheaders of the show, the sponsors, the ones that make it happen every Saturday morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Steve. Welcome to the show. Good morning, have, Steve. Do you have the appropriate license to be here this morning? <laughs> Well, I'm hoping you do. Oh, I'm 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 just saying that you know you have to have a license to do pretty much anything these days if you don't have the right license. Yeah, yeah that's segueing into uh, we're all laughing about this, even though it's not funny. It's very serious if you seriously think about it. Some girls in uh, Georgia had their lemonade stand shut down for not having the proper licensing on their own property, trying to raise some money to go to a water park, a theme park. The chief of police drove by and saw this outrageous offense against the state and proceeded to shut them down. He was quoted in several papers. We looked in several different media outlets, so we didn't distort this at all. And uh, he said that uh, they needed a $50 day, fifty a day license or $100, $180 for the year. And uh, the chief said that we're not aware of how the lemonade is made, who made the lemonade, of what the lemonade was made of, with, so we acted according to city ordinance. So they shut them down, told them to go start selling crack like normal little kids. <laughs> I don't think they actually told them to start selling crack now, did they? Oh, maybe not. But uh, basically, this is the whole thing with the free market. They didn't. They don't need to tell them what it was made out of. And all that kind of stuff, because if it was bad, people wouldn't buy it. If it was good, people will buy it. Basic economics. You don't need the government to figure that out. I don't think it's about economics, though. I mean, the same thing happened here in Fairbanks, where they shut down that little kid that was running a lemonade stand or whatever was goodies out of the back of his wagon. It was competition. It was unauthorized competition. Well, there is one good thing that will come out of this. When those little girls get older, they'll definitely become Republicans. (laughs) <laughs> because we know Republicans have all the right answers, right? Is that what you're saying? Well, they promote freedom. Oh, yeah, right. Sure they do. Following up on that story, I found quite a few more. There's, it actually goes on all over the nation with this lemonade stands, but I also saw one where they went into, it was in Maryland, they went into a uh, church and stopped their Wednesday night spaghetti feed because they didn't have the proper food licensing. Now, Aaron, I, I want to make sure that you you did have your tongue firmly in cheek when you said that about Republicans, right? Well, of course. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. I see it sticking almost through his cheek. All right, okay. <laughs> all right, so as long as we've got all of our licenses uh, properly <coughs> filed and everything, I'm still picking chocolate chips out of the council. What in the world happened in here last night? There's Maybe like they had a cookie feed. Chocolate, oh, I hope they had the right permits for it. Do uh, you want to go to the phones or you want to mention something else before we go there? Yeah, I guess if someone wants to talk, we got other stuff to talk about. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hey, uh, um, this is Joe. I just wanted to say uh, I've been in that far north tactical several times, and they've got some really uh, good gear there, and um, they have uh, Army surplus at real surplus prices. So I just wanted to thank you guys, and uh, I'll hang up and listen. Thanks. All right, cool. Yeah, thanks. thanks for that. Appreciate wow. that. Actually, I have a meeting coming up with the the ca- the commander from Isleson, the commander from Wainwright to um, steer the course of Far North Tactical, I guess, so to speak. So we'll see how that turns out as far as our military surplus items go. That was a nice call. I was waiting for the butt. Aaron's a jerk. But that was all right. <laughs> but he's just trying to scare people. Why why on earth would you sell things like military surplus unless you're just trying to scare people? Yeah, I'm a scary gay. I don't know if any of you saw that the D.C. District Court, Judge Douglas Ginsburg, has stated that uh, the naked body scans of people from the TSA is obviously constitutional because it's a reasonable search with the threat that we face from our airline. Naked Jews were legal, too, at one time. You know, that, that's a good point. Uh, I, I, I'm really glad that because a judge has told us that it's constitutional, even though it feels wrong and even though nobody is actually giving us a warrant or giving us any kind of probable cause to strip search us, which is basically what that is. I mean, if, if they're looking at us without our clothes on. They may be just taking our clothes off 
uh, electronically instead of physically. Well, in one case, I mean, what was that? That that woman last week in a wheelchair that was strip searched by the TSA. You guys hear about that one? Yeah, and a uh, what an 80 year old lady was forced to take off her adult diaper in yeah. front of everyone. Exactly. Now, it, it, you know, the, these to me that does not seem like it re- it meets that constitutional standard of a reasonable search. And for a judge to tell us, no, 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 you stupid people. Of course, it's a reasonable search because of the threat that Look we're at under. The threat. We have to have security. Isn't That's that <laughs> isn't that why they wrote the Constitution was four times like these, so that when we are under threat, when we are in perilous times, that we still have our rights protected? Hmm. It, uh, let's listen to the kids. Oh, you want to you want to play? Yeah. It? Okay, I'll take let's me. Let's see what they did say. Take while me a half a second to that. find that. Yeah. We also see a lady was charged with a felony for groping a TSA agent. Basically, in Phoenix. yeah, the, the oh, yep. yeah, I saw that story this this uh, morning. The, the woman was in the line, found herself being molested, but basically touched. She would the, the TSA, the, the woman TSA agent was grabbing her breasts, was doing the things that they normally do, touching her all over. So she reached out and she grabbed the TSA woman's breasts herself. She basically did the same thing to the TSA agent that the TSA agent was doing to her. Yep. And she got hauled off to jail and charged with a felony for sexual assault. Yes. So the same thing the government does every all day. Here's what the kids have to say. It will be found an unjust and unwise jealousy to deprive a man of his natural liberty upon the supposition he may abuse it. George Washington. They who would give up an essential liberty for temporary security deserve neither liberty or security. Benjamin Franklin. The Constitution is not an instrument for the government to restrain the people. It is an instrument for the people to restrain the government, lest it come to dominate our lives and interests. Patrick Henry. America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter and lose our freedoms, it would be because we destroyed ourselves, Abraham Lincoln. I predict future happiness for Americans if they can prevent the government from wasting the labors of the people under the pretense of taking care of them. Thomas Jefferson. Property is surely a right of mankind as real as liberty. John Adams. The Constitution is a guide which I never will abandon. George Washington. Brought to you by Bighorn Enterprises, who would like to remind us all what America is all about. Now that is the uh, the ad that we play for Bighorn Enterprises during Problem Corner uh, every Monday through Friday. And you, what I like about that ad, there's a couple of things. First and foremost, Josh, is the fact that you don't spend a lot of time talking about your business, but about what what makes you passionate, and that is, look, it's about the Constitution. And I really like that, because you know what, people who are interested in what you have to say, you know what, they're, they're going to look up your business, and they're going to thank you for, for providing that, just putting those quotes on the air. The other thing I like about it is just the quotes themselves are powerful stuff, and I don't get a chance to hear them very often. Yeah, well, they're uh, kind of ridiculable. I mean, those the kids that are, uh, those are my kids that are doing those quotes, whatever, if that's the exact... They're the reason why I feel the way I do. Because if we just let things go willy-nilly as they are, they're not going to have no. anything. Not compared to what I have. I mean, they're not going to have anything. Well, not any resemblance of freedom. One of the things that I, I really think that if you look at what's happening now today, the reason why we have people being groped by the TSA and why we have a judge telling us, no, no, it's okay, it's constitutional, it's perfectly reasonable to be strip searched anywhere, anytime by anyone because of the threat we're under and why people aren't rising up and saying, what, you're, you're full of it, is because people don't read the founders, because people don't read the Constitution, because I don't think most people read anything at all these days and people who do read are mocked. Speaking of which, joining, me, uh, joining us now, uh, Dave Giesel just walked in from... Uh, the, the local chapter, the Fairbanks chapter of the Campaign for Liberty, and one of the things that Dave does an awful lot and gets mocked for is read actual books. Good morning, Dave. Hi, Steve. Yeah, have you read anything uh, controversial and uh, inflammatory this week? Uh, of course. Um, I read uh, a book titled The Myth of National Defense. It should be burned, and so should you. Uh, many of the listeners, I think, would agree with you on that. <laughs> right, the myth of national defense. Going, going back, Steve, to people that um, get mocked, what's it, Dennis what? Kucinich. Dennis Kucinich. He um, testified in front of Congress, did what they do in front of Congress, and said that uh, the issue with Obama in Libya is to stand up for the Constitution. 
and all the Republican talk radio is all bashing him for standing up for the Constitution. What right does he have to say that? He's a liberal. While this thing goes back, I think with the TSA to bounce back to that, one of those quotes in there is that the, they who would give up a liberty, not, I mean, that's any liberty. It's not just like, well, if you give up 90%, no, it's any liberty for temporary security deserve neither. That wasn't just like something made up out of thin air. That's a truth. And the reason, one of the problems that people have, why they don't understand that quote, why they don't understand the concept of that is because they think the Constitution is the thing that grants them that liberty in the first place. No, so it's the ex- Second Amendment. Oh. Okay, so the Second expect- Amendment is part of the Constitution. Go ahead. Right. If you think that the government who created, well, it wasn't the government that created it. When the people created the Constitution, if you think that that's what gave you those rights, well, then when a judge says, well, this is actually legal, perfectly fine, then you'll be apt to accept that. But if you understand that your rights are inherent when you were born, not granted by anyone but God, then you can understand that I don't care what you say, judge, you're wrong. Laws are made by people, and people can be wrong. Uh, wait a second. That sounds like a song by Peter, Paul, and Mary. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Four, yeah, crank that one up, too. 458 Talk is a number. We go back to the phones. Good morning, caller. Who's this? All right. They didn't hold. How about you? Good morning. Who's this? This is Winston. Winston, what's on your mind today? Uh, talking about reading, I've been reading a book called uh, uh, Intellectuals in Society by Thomas Sowell, S-O-W-E-L-L. And uh, 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 a lot of people don't uh, uh, understand that these these the, the conflicting visions uh, 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 that go on in society, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm 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 having difficulty of talking for some reason or other. I don't know why, but. Uh, uh, the uh, the the intellectuals got this this vision of, of, of society as as, as uh, an anointed vision of, of people that uh, if you just elect the right person every four years, then every, all of our problems will work out and it'll all be perfect. But then it's conflicted with the tragic vision, which most all of us uh, uh, believe in, uh, sure. and. Uh, 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 that that civilization is just a thin, thin crust on top of of, of a chaos and anarchy, and we have to work hard to keep it. If if, if we can't communicate the, the 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 tragic vision to people, we're going to lose it. All right, appreciate the call, Winston. Comments, gentlemen. Oh, I I haven't actually read that book, but uh, Sowell is he's a pretty good author. Um, if anybody wants to read him regularly, I would steer them over to lourockwell.com. He's posted up there at least twice a week. Yeah. I guess I was right on the money. It's just what we bark about here all the time is uh, if you think that these problems are going to end when you vote in the right person. Yeah. Or the right party. You're wrong. It isn't going to happen. Yeah. Well, you, you look at the, the same policies that we have now under President Obama. They are the same policies we had under President Bush, the same policies we had under Clinton, the same policies we had under Bush the first. What has changed in the last 20 years? Realistically, what has changed? More complacency on the right if we have a Republican. Yeah. Whereas the liberals are never complacent no matter what. <laughs> They're always gung ho. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, now, would the, are you saying that conservatives should be more more gung ho? Maybe they should have a purge in their party. I think that uh, when the Republican was uh, Republicans were dominating, that you didn't see any outcries of any of our liberties being taken away, and all it took was for Obama to be elected. He hadn't done anything yet. He just got elected, and everything in my store sold in two days. I would think that's a little bit of ignorance. 